Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising awareness about energy, technology, diversity, and globalization. This, this show is center stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukukui Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukukui Theater. I would like to let you know that you can see our shows every weekday right here on thinktechhawaii.com on at between 1 o'clock and 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. You can also catch our shows archived uh, at thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube. They are all archived there. And if you would ever like to join us in our downtown studio audience, contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. Enough of the business. Now I would like to talk about my guest. Her name is Jane Campbell. And Jane, there's a story behind this. Jane is the reason why I am here on this island. Uh, she is a theater maven of Oahu. After working here for the last 50 years, she still has her finger firmly planted on the pulse of all that is theater in Oahu. Welcome, Jane. Well, thank you. <laughs> Glad to be here. I uh, am so excited to have you here on the show. And I'll tell our story real quickly that I had uh, talked with um, Honolulu Theater for Youth, mm -hmm. uh, got to know you as a board member there, and became yeah, And friends. I thought she was just really great. It was one you, you were one of our finalists. And uh, I, well, and I enjoyed talking, getting to yeah, know you too, uh -huh. and I thought, I honestly thought, um, and, and that really wasn't the right job for me. I enjoyed the, the communication and, and learning yeah, about the theater, yeah. but it, it really wasn't the right one for me. I'm very happy for Becky, um, Becky Dunning, but I enjoyed getting to know you, and I thought mm, that yeah, was it. That yeah. was the end. So you said, I think I'm going to come to Hawaii anyway. Yeah. No. And, you, and you did. <laughs> and I did because you. Well, said Kumu to me, said, yeah. We're looking for a managing director. Do you have any ideas? Mm -hmm. And I said, Well, as a matter of fact, I do. And um, so I think I emailed you and said, Can I, would you like me, would you mind? I mean, is it okay if I send your uh, resume over to Kumu to who? Because we talked about Kumu yeah. when on the on the telephone. Because you'd run some small theaters in, in our Benin small theaters, mm -hmm. and not that we're not that Honolulu Theater for Youth is that huge, but Kumu's small. It, it was yes, yeah, smaller. And smaller then before you came, <laughs> and so you said yes, and she said it was only a couple of days later. It seemed you said I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. That moved really fast. Yeah, I know they liked you immediately, and and uh, you like them, and and it's. I, I'm just so proud. Every time you know you introduce yourself, I think, oh, I'm so I'm so proud of her. She's just <laughs> doing great. Oh, and so you've got you. more money now and more people, and we're, the theater's and doing well. We're oh, we're yeah. on a nice upward trajectory. That's great. Yeah. Of course, you can never you have to say that with your fingers crossed. But on theater, you've right. been doing really well one day, and then yeah. you know I you're know. only you say you're only as good as the last show. Somebody professional said that. that's not really true in a small town. I mean, we're you know compared to Chicago, New York, et cetera, we're sort of a small town. Oh. But, you know, your reputation goes along, and you, if you get a really good reputation, that'll carry you for a while. I think so, too, and vice versa. Yeah, and then, <laughs> <laughs> God, their shows lately have been awful, so that's a terrible that's thing. That's with do. people. Yeah. But your shows lately have been great. We have been rocking. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, and the HTY has been rocking. Yeah. In fact, so, just the other day, they made more money than they've ever made at their fundraiser. Becky called me. She said, "I suppose you made more money when you were managing director back in the early days, you know, when there was more money around." And I said, "I think I said, no, actually, I, I'm. I'll go along with it. That's a that's a that's a uh, prize. I mean, the that's highest a, ever. Yeah, highest oh, that's ever. Awesome. And this is a bad time. You know, just like public radios had, you know, had trouble. And yeah. somebody was saying today, well, oh gosh." And they look, but they're they're rocking today too, so they're they're going to be fine. They're getting through there. Yeah, they're real fast. But uh, is it well between the you know among the snails at the North Shore, so they couldn't fix their their transmission, because it was romance time for snails. These tree snails. Did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was tree snails, and so they couldn't get in there because they didn't want to ruin the whole you know romantic cycle of the, these snails. So um, then then there was a. a World Series. It was a really rock and roll series, oh. and uh, and that that was that, you know 
baseball. I know, I know. I thought, what? what? Oh, that, yeah. It, oh, is it the, really the World Series? Oh, I see. Okay. But anyway, for one reason or the other, you know, they didn't make their goal. Yeah. So they took the weekend off, and now they're all revitalized. Now they're and, back. Yeah, they, they seem to be rocking today. I, I, haven't, I haven't called in my pledge yet, have you? Well, you had better. I know. Oh, yes. I did the first they time. Came back just I always go in and answer phones, and then sometimes I sit on the on the table, but sometimes I chatter too much and they go, Kelsey, tell the phone number, tell the phone number. <laughs> we are here to chatter. Yes, this I'm is yeah, all okay, about okay. your chatter. Okay. So I'm going to direct you just slightly in your chatter and then I'm going to let you go. Yeah, you better, yeah, rubber band. The, I need direction. <laughs> so let's start off with, you are still on the board of directors at Honolulu yeah, Theater for Youth. Yeah, I'm not still, I wasn't for a while. When I quit, I, you know, thought I'd better get out of the way. You start, yeah. then let's go back okay. to the beginning. You started there as what? How did you join up? I was doing, well, I was a reporter. Remember I called her, I said, you know, the, I forgot to tell you the big thing, in, I mean, what I always considered myself as, I'm a new, newspaper reporter, basically. And um, I came here and I was doing all sorts of interesting things, like the zoo and um, mo movies, uh, visiting movie stars and um, the aquarium. And uh, a Honolulu Theater for Youth was just getting started with Nancy Corbett as the founder. And I was just, well, why don't you go, you know, because Nancy will really get on our tail if we don't cover her story. Ah. So I, that's how I met Honolulu Theater for Youth in about 1958. And um, so I, you know, did lots and lots of stories. So then I remarried, unfortunately, and uh, to someone who said, well, no wife of mine is going to work. And I thought, oh, my God, I should have looked into this a little bit more. <laughs> A little yeah, vacation yeah, yeah. Not a bad so uh, <laughs> Nancy said we need a publicity director or public you know publicity person I said here I am so um, I uh, did publicity for years and, and had two kids for HTY for HTY oh. for about six years and then I became the I think it was executive executive PR director the wow. biggest title I've ever had. How large must the organization have been to have a, an executive well, PR director? Well, because I was, I was, there was the executive PR director and the artistic director, and uh, well, yeah, we had a staff of five or six people. We were about pretty big back then. Um, six hundred, seven hundred and fifty thousand at oh, that okay. time in mid sixties. Wow, that was a lot of yeah, money back then. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a big theater. And then when I left in the fifty. Uh, 52, 02. It was about a million and a half or 1.6, which is about where it is now. It dropped for a while and uh, then it has come back and it's it's right up there. Yeah. And um, of course, I'm really proud of it because it's the biggest, it's the only really professional theater in Hawaii. I mean, with this professional staff, actors are, pro you know, everyone's mm -hmm. a professional. Your actors get insurance. Uh, yes, that's a big yes. deal. Yeah, they get um, from the time. I remember when we signed up when uh, Hawaii first took on the uh, insurance, you know, the health insurance, and we signed up right away. I please don't ask me the date. I have no idea when it was, but I think it was well, whenever it was. We signed up right away, and we paid. The beginning was that we couldn't pay. We it was we paid a little bit. We, we couldn't pay more than fifteen percent of our salary toward uh, the medical plan. Oh. And so, you know, I think we were about the only state that was doing that. I mean, we, you know, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, all this fight over the Obama thing, you think, good God, you know what? Oh, my God, Hawaii's been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. And HGY was right from the beginning. So our actors get medical, they get, um, uh, we, we're not a, um, you know, commercial, uh, what am I saying? Uh, like Lort? Uh, Lord, I mean, we're not a, um, we don't have equity. Equity. Thank you. <laughs> um, because equity here is kind of difficult. You have to, you, you, you have to, uh, uh, you have to audition in one of the big cities on the, on the West Coast. And, oh, and there's all sorts of rules. And it's the only, we'd be the only equity theater here. And if our actors are equity, they're really not supposed they to. They can't do anything they else. They can't do anything else. Well, of course, our actors are everywhere, right. as you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of them. Our actors are whores on this island. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, t we, you know, we've always, uh, HTY and uh, Kumu have always been close. Yes. Because we, you know, we do this really down to earth, really, really good theater. I mean, really good theater. I think so yeah. too. Yeah. I, both, both of our theaters are not only accepting of innovation, but we yeah. expect it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we expect, 
I think when I left, and I think Eric is making it more and more, one, two thirds of our plays uh, were original. And most theaters, and especially children's theaters for young, we're not a children's theater. Well, we have to make that plain. Uh, we're not children doing theater. We're adults doing theater for, for young people. Children. And the founder, Nancy Corbett, who was a very you know, outspoken woman, she said, well, that's crazy. I mean, that's why I named it Honolulu Theater for Youth. Don't, don't people understand that? <laughs> <laughs> apparently not. Yeah, apparently not. So you uh, okay? But I'm we pull do up. we do original work, and you're all original work. Yes. Of and for Hawaii. Yeah. By and or about. Yes. Oh yes. By and yeah. or about. Yeah. <laughs> and our current play is Hawaiian. You know. I, that, I that, it just that, opened. Yeah, yeah. It just it opens officially Friday night. Okay. If the hurricane holds off. Hurricane. I don't yeah. know if I'm gonna go out and buy cans of tuna. Or not. I know. I thought, but then I talked to my son, the captain in uh, Hawaii, and he said, no, 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 it's changed. It's got really, really strong. He says, overnight, went, bing, it's a hurricane. So I'm not coming over tomorrow, because if I come over, then I'll have, because he's working. He's got work to do for me. It's terrible to have a, have a son, I mean, a contractor who's your son. It's oh. like having your contractor who's a husband. You know, <laughs> you're sort of at the end of the line. Of, oh, I see what and you're And so saying. I was finally going to get my kitchen fixed, and then the hurricane comes along, so. It, you should just wait a little while. Yeah, I can wait a little while. Uh, okay, so you started off as a newspaper person. Yes, I worked for the Star Bulletin, the Honolulu uh, Star Bulletin, the evening paper. Okay, and then when well, you went to PR, so you were you were still dealing with press releases just yeah. on the other side yeah. of it. Yeah. Any more news writing after that? I I think it seems to me that I subbed a, a little bit here and there, but I did a lot. There was always call for um, PR, you know, there were conferences and things, and there weren't very many freelance PR people then. I wasn't one of the good ones because I, uh, I'm, I mean, I was really a newspaper person at heart, and um, I'd write better than i talk to people. You know, I'd say, um, I don't suppose you'd be interested in giving us some publicity. <laughs> That's really not the way to go. But. Um, then, but Nancy caught me, and then I was so busy with, I mean, I had two, two babies, and I was doing all the publicity for Honolulu Theater for Youth, so that kept me really busy until Nancy retired in 1966. And um, in those days, it was very simple. Well, I, the, uh, Nancy said, well, I'm retiring because, you know, Jerry and I are wanting to travel, and Jane's going to take my place. So that was, you know, it was very simple. It was just done. Yeah, it was like just that. done. And a couple, even a couple of years later, when Lorraine Dove, uh, many people here would know Lorraine Dove. She was a great, well, maybe not now, but she was a great singer, actress for Honolulu Community Theater. She played all the Mary Martin roles. I mean, uh -huh. she was our Mary Martin. And in fact, she, Lorraine Dove toured throughout the South Pacific as, as uh, uh, in South Pacific. Oh. Uh, they flew on a Army transports. Uh, it was for the, you know, Morale and Welfare, USO, yeah, yeah, USO tour, and she played, you know, she was Maria in uh, South Pacific, and um, then she she took over my job. Why did I why did I leave? Oh, I I remarried. Oh, a, a, a staff member. So I thought, well, I think I probably better better step down from being the head person. Oh, staff member at HTY. At HTY, yeah. <sighs> Te Not technical, you. technical director. Fishing yeah. off the company yes, chair. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. And so Lorraine took over, and uh, we'd worked together for a long time. And then she, when she left about four years later, this is getting pretty late in the year, you know, 80, late 80s, 90s, says, well, I'm, uh, I'm retiring to go to, uh, we have a, Harry and I are going to move to the Big Island, and Jane's going to Jane's gonna take over her old job. <laughs> so it was so easy. But now, when you know, when I left, we had all all this stuff. Everybody had the interviews. Well, and that husband, number three, yeah. was no longer the technical director. Then. No, no. He, or he was no longer the husband. He was well. I can't. Remember, you know, no, no. He was no longer the husband. He was. He was a technical. Tech, tech is Bob Campbell, whom m many people will recognize, and uh, great friends. We were always great friends. Um, he went to Honolulu Community Theater. And then from there he went to television, and he was a television cameraman for uh -huh. Channel 9 and then Channel 4. And then he married Holly Richards, who was 
a longtime producer for public television oh. and a long, oh, an old friend of mine. So we were all very friendly. Yeah. We, well, you, you do have your finger on the pulse of everything that's <laughs> going on in entertainment. But I, don't, I don't have any former husbands, though. It they, is involved anymore? No, they've all, they've all oh. uh, what did we say, pre-deceased? Pre-deceased me. Yeah, so I think I must be hard on people. <laughs> You're stalwart, yeah, Jane. <laughs> but anyway, I did. I Mar Bob and I were, were, you know, he was tech director for a while, and we married. And um, um, when he was at H2Y, and then he went on to, I think, from there he went went from us. He went to H2Y. I mean, community theater. Okay. And you, so you became the uh, managing director at that point. Yeah. By the time I had taken over from Lorraine, we had gotten more. Well, we we became we went professional. In um, at with a you know with the CETA, you know the community I mean the CETA, federal oh. money. Oh, it was. Um, oh, I remember. Yeah. yeah, we could hire people for five hundred and ninety-one dollars a month. Five hundred and ninety-one dollars a month. Well, right. And it was to uh, it was, they were supposed to be doing community service. Well, we hired our people to be act to act as for the community. And to go to, you know, we were doing work for schools, and they were doing education work in the schools, and uh, and then they were going out to work in the schools as educators, and it was easy to convince the feds that this was a community service yeah. position. It is. It is. Ho hold on just yeah. a second. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. We will take a quick break and be right back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she Aloha. My name is Daniel Luke, and this is my co-host, Tha Ng. We'll be here every other Monday on New Media, The Bleeding Edge, on Think Tech, talking about the intersection of social media and the news. We'll cover technology, trends, and other fun stuff. Did I leave anything out? Well, I'm here to keep you honest, so that's my job, to remind you of everything you've forgotten and uh, to challenge you at every point. Excellent. My wife tells me that I'm wrong about quite a lot. Hi, we're back and we're live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. I am your host, Donna Blanchett. I am talking with theater maven Jane Campbell. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very close to Kumukuhu Theater. <laughs> okay, close. let's very close. Yeah. Uh, so let's go back to um, our conversation here. Now you, so you, then you stayed as managing director at HTY mm -hmm. until yeah. 2002. Yeah. At that point, uh, it was it was well it was well established in the theater world that um, theaters had usually had two leaders, a managing director who made sure there was money, yeah, you know, and an and artistic director, and then we changed that. I think we were the first theater in the country. You know, we were talking about us both of us being innovative. Uh, Dan Kellen had been doing education, drama education work in the schools uh, for years, and he was a major, a major figure in our, in our work. So we became a triumvirate. We called ourselves the Troika. You know, the Russian with yeah, the three, the with the horse, three horses. Three horses. And, yeah. <laughs> and so we had a managing director, a dire, um, artistic. artistic director, and um, um, education. Education, or dra uh, education director. Drum, I'm not an old Dan. I'm sorry, I can't or remember the title. Director of Education. Yeah, director. Yeah, director of Education. And, and that's the way it, that's the way it is now. And we have this wonderful trio now: Becky Dunning, the managing director, who's been in theater in Hawaii for 30 years. I've known her forever. And Eric Johnson, a wonderful, a wonderful director. God, he's great. And Dan Kellen, whom every lots of people know. You know, he's done a lot of Zuma work. Yeah, he has. He's been on the show. Oh, has also, he? Yeah. yeah. He's got quite an interesting body of work. Yeah, he too. talks more than I do. So, but, but, you know, I don't only do... <laughs> I don't only do theater. You know, since I retired, I jumped into music. Yes. Because I really love music. I, my first memory, I have to tell this, my very first me real memory, you know, rather than my parents telling me, don't you remember when you fell in this water and dad picked you up? was sitting on the grass on, with a little chair in the back uh, at the, in, at, on the Esplanade in Boston, listening to um, the Boston Pops Orchestra play the summer program at the Shell in, in, on the, in Boston across the, across the river from 
uh, Harvard. Of course, I didn't know that then, and I didn't know that Walter Fiedler was the director, but he was. And that's the first thing I really remember, because I remember being down there, and there were all these lights up there, and there's all this music coming. Ah, and, and you loved it? I loved it. I just loved it. And so I've loved it ever since. So now I'm, I'm really active with uh, Chamber Music Hawaii, which is the resident professional chamber music organization. They're all symphony members. There's a there's a quin, uh, wind quintet and a brass quintet, the Honolulu brass and the wind, spring wind quintet and the string uh, the Galliard string quartet. So there's 14 member musicians. Oh, okay. And I love chamber music. It's sort of like it's like jazz. I mean, every musician plays a different role. I mean, plays a different part. Mm -hmm. And you're up close. I mean, they could be sitting sort of over there where that camera is. And, and it's very close. And you can, you can determine what each instrument is playing, which is fun. Well, oh, you know, that's nice. why people like jazz, because, wow, what a riff, you know, or something. Well, somebody will do something. Oh, gee, that was so good. Yeah. And symphonies wonder. I love symphony, but it's the whole, whoa, you know, ooh. Yeah, it's what they all create to the sum of yeah. their parts. Yeah, so I love chamber music, and I, I'm on the board, and I also write grant applications. Freelance. Uh, freelance, yeah, uh, it's professionally, so. Hey, I, I want to go back just a minute, okay. though. You've been involved with HTY for so long. Why that? The, did, you, did you just end up there and say, I'm going to stick with this one? Or is it really the mission of that organization? Oh, well, um, yeah, it, it was cut to the break. It was the mission. Yeah. Because I didn't know anything about theater. I remember years later, somebody asked me, well, who's, wh wh what happened to the psych? And I didn't know what a psych was. <laughs> I didn't know nothing about theater. Um, I, what, what I knew was uh, starting, I mean, uh, writing about its beginnings uh, when I was at Star Bulletin, interviewing Nancy Corbett, oh. and going to see the, the first shows. And I thought it was fabulous, because they knew all their lines. They were better than, than another theater in town. And <laughs> because I was, they knew all their lines. They knew all their lines. They were wonderful. And Ronnie Bright was playing the evil prince in an Indian show, and I learned that he could get out off school for two weeks to be in a play, because it was theater for, you know, for youth, and we played for schools. Okay. And I just, I thought, that, well, now this is something. Now this is a reason for doing that silly thing called theater. <laughs> and um, so I, uh, Nancy, I got close, I mean, I was very close to Nancy. She became my daughter's godmother, and I said she was my fairy godmother. Uh -huh. And um, so I, I remember one time, I was quite honored, um, I think it was Diamond Head, um, was looking for a managing director, and they, you know, because I'd been running things for a long time, and I said, well, I, thank you, but I, you know, I really feel that this is where I want to be, and uh, um, I was very happy at it, and I really had to leave, but I was, I think, 70-something, and I thought, I'm really too old to uh, be running a theater company, and I think maybe I'm too old to be out here in the working world, maybe I should quit. I hate to admit that was 12 years ago. <laughs> I, so I left, and I, I was I was sorry but for a while, except I loved being being retired for about three months. Been and needed. I bought so many books the last two years. Every time I went to a museum, every time I went to Bishop Museum, every time I went to Hilo, or I loved reading about Hawaiian history. I had all these books, and I also hate to admit. They're all still on the shelf. <laughs> Retirement hasn't given you it any hasn't. more time. It hasn't. It didn't work for Because me. you didn't really retire, because you are working, you headed the Windward Arts Council? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that came along just out of the blue. Because um, uh, I live in Windward, I'm a great advocate of Windward Oahu. I love it. You said you missed living in Windward Oahu. I do. And um, they were, you know, they were in a transition. Somebody who'd been president for a long, long time moved to the mainland. And, and I was a member, and they said, well, why don't you be president? You're, I said, I can't. I'm still working. And they said, so a friend of mine, I mean, this woman that's become a close friend, said, well, I'll be president for two years until you quit. And so when I quit, then I became president, and I was president for 12 years. And what uh, did that council do? We were a group of individual, of um, volunteers, all most living in, in Windward, Oahu, you know, Waimanalo, 
uh, Tai Lu, Tani Oi, Ta, Ta Lu, um, who did vo uh, helped uh, produce, not produce, but um, publicize and, and uh, um, help the arts, all the arts, you know, drama, theater, um, of drama and theater, and dance and music and everything, and fine arts. And we were sort of an outgrowth of the Windward, of the Windward Morning Music Club that folded, and, all, and then those people all became, sort of formed the Windward okay. Arts Council. And we were, we had a membership of about 200, 150 who paid oh. dues. And we did, you know, we supported things with small grants. We started a lot of things. We helped start the, I mean, really helped the, the uh, prison writing project at Women's Community. Oh, um, uh, pr uh, Women's Prison get going. And we were, re I'm really proud of that. And uh, we uh, supported the music, free music program for Pohainani. Um, but no, not what, 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 not because it was free, but because so many people can't get out. We they did three or four, we sponsored three or four uh, uh, chamber music programs. The last thing we did was to help start the Reader's Theater, uh, which at, is still going. Well, yeah, it's, this yeah. is in its third year, and it's and this year uh, Benita Ray is celebrating the end of the uh, Second World War with four really touching World War II stories. And uh, the first one just closed, um, Sylvia uh, Horman Alper. And you're, it's a shame that she's, she can't be in a Kumu show. Because she's, well, she's 75, and she did this one-woman show, and she was just stunning. Oh. I love Reader's Theater because they just sit, and, and they actually, they read. They read the script. They don't pretend it. But they know it so well that it's, it's acting, and it's just wonderful. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a different type. So that was, I didn't expect to do that, because I'm not really a community person. I've always been a professional. But I love that. But it was, it was a tight group. They'd been people that had been together for about 30 years. I was a newcomer. And we were getting really old. <laughs> and so two years ago, I said, you know, guys, why don't we just close down instead of just sort of drift away and in between on the misty flats, the rest, this. <laughs> and so we did. And people said, well, why are you quitting? I said, because we're old. <laughs> so, well, the organizations that you started, helped start and yeah, supported, they, those are yeah. still going yeah, on. And we it's made sure that those that we were still um, um, hand, handling their money, we handled money for a lot of uh, nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. not a lot, but those that we agreed with, of course, uh, that they had another sponsor. So that, that you know they could keep going. Uh, oh, so okay. we, that we took care of everything. But um, and, and we still go to public radio, but we don't know what to call ourselves. I mean, they say, well, who, well it's just me and my <laughs> old friends. <laughs> you windward yeah. friends. <laughs> but I just really love working with uh, chamber music. It's a, the 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 entity of a close knit. Musicians group is, is is really wonderful because they're they're so dependent on one another, and that because you know music in theater you can break out and be a star although the other actors may not like you for it all the time. <laughs> but a musician is a really a teamwork which I love. Ah, okay. We're gonna we're gonna yeah, take a break and then we're gonna come back and talk okay. about that some more. That's a whole can of worms you just opened up. Yeah. Uh, we will be right back. Stay tuned. This is Center Stage on Think Tech uh, Hawaii. We'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you think? I think that's absolutely correct. We enjoy, we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy. And hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So we're terrific. Join us. Okay, it's every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. see you there. 
Hi, we're back. <laughs> this is Set of Stage, uh, the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. I'm Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. We are coming to you live from yes. Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown, very near Kumukuhua Theater. And I am talking with Jane Campbell, who is still on the board at Honolulu yes, Theater yes, for yes. Youth and working with Chamber Music Hawaii. Is it Chamber? No. Chamber Music Hawaii. Chamber Music yes. Hawaii. Okay, so let's talk about this. Let's get okay. down to this because <laughs> you, you and I, yeah. um, I come from a theater background and then d developed the business part of me mm -hmm. to support my theater habit. Yeah. You come from the business world and, and support theater because you yeah. love it? Well, I come from the newspaper, well, the, sort of the newspaper world, but I wasn't from the theater world. Yeah. Uh, and I think for better or for worse, you know, people in, in the arts are so committed that it's really hard to, to, to take criticism. I mean, and I know, I mean, I, I, be, I become that way. Well, what do you mean we wasn't good? I what do you know? I wonderful. <laughs> the opera was just the best thing I've ever seen. Well, I didn't think it was that good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who would have said yeah, that? Yeah, I would have said that. Um, that I had that other outside view because the reporter, you know, they say, well, this is the most wonderful thing in the world. And so you tend to say, well, According to many people, that this is this is the most wonderful thing in the world. But you, you, you have to stand off a little bit. Oh. So I, for better or for worse, I took that into theater. Um, but what I really took was um, what I did know about was um, paying bills. Uh. And that's something that you, you know you talk about the arts, and if the art is not supported, well supported, it can't be art artful. I mean, that's why Kumu wanted a good, strong managing director. And um, why, why um, uh, Chamber Music Hawaii has to be sure that it keeps that, tries to keep that one-third, one-third, one-third funding balance. One-third from individual donations, which has to, that's, the, that's probably the most important, and certainly at, at uh, public radio. Now, they're 90% supported by, by, you know, they're wonderful. I mean, that's another thing to be proud of coming from Hawaii, being living in Hawaii, Hawaii Public Radio. Uh, one third from grants, one third from the uh, earned income. Earned income. Yeah. And we're a little short on that, but not too bad for a performing arts. Uh, symphony, of course, the symphonies are so expensive that they can't hit that one third, I don't think. But a small uh, uh, musical group can't. And then one third, um, let's see, the found, four -third. found, found, foundations, individual. Oh, business and foundation support. In other words, contributed support. Yes. And it's absolutely vital that that the, you meet the budget and you stay with you set a budget and you meet it. And so there has to be, there has to be a lot of really serious work done on funding the arts. That's and hard for a lot of people to understand, yeah, that, I mean, that how much of the business goes into the arts. I know so many people, including my brother, who was a, I loved my brother, I mean, I love my brother, he's now dead, um, um, who was a basketball coach. And he said, you're paying people to act? <laughs> I, are you crazy? And then I was saying, we, we wanted to build a theater here. Uh, Honolulu Theater for Youth had a great long dream of having a theater built by the city. And we almost did it out at Kaka'ako. We had a space, we oh. had land, and then the, the, it was the year that everything dropped out, the money of oh, the 90s. Oh, the oh, 90s, the, the 90s the yeah, when Cayetano be, took over as governor and found that, that boy, he had, he'd taken over a, took, took over at a bad time. Mm -hmm. I've always loved Ben because he just, well, this is what it is. We're going to get through this. Um, they, uh, we had the land, and they say, you know, I wish you could do this because nobody else can. And I said, well, I'm one of those other people. We just can't. It's, you know, we just, anyway, we didn't. And so I was telling Myron, my brother, I said, well, we want the city to build us, a, the state to build us a theater. Well, the state's not going to build a theater. Why would the state build a theater? I said, well, Seattle's built two sports arenas. Yeah, but that's for sports. So. And what do you yeah. say to that? Well, I just, oh, I said, you're crazy. Of course, theater, we did arts council. Well, there's been several arts councils, and I've been on all of them. Uh, an arts council of many, some years ago, did a wonderful survey. It's, it was a big, heavy survey. It took about six months. 
to find out how big a, a portion of the eco economy in Hawaii was was attributable directly attributable to the arts, yeah. performing arts, visual arts, you know everything. And of course, the big thing that the arts do is the um, 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 people coming to the theater, going out for supper. People, I mean the the, the peripheral uh, things right. are around around the performing arts. Yeah, they As park and yeah, they, they get. Dinner and they get drinks, drinks and, they and they get clothes, they shop, while they get all in. that. And then, and then there's the actual business of the art itself. I mean, Honolulu Theater for Youth is a million and a half dollar economic, in, um, economic uh, engine. Yeah. So that that amount that, of it's a balanced budget. Yeah. So that amount of money is going so, out. Going so out, and, it, going and it goes out to the community. It's not being paid to a, to someone, you know, to a mainland company. And any money that we that from uh, Chamber of Music of Hawaii goes into the you know it's paying people the artists the musicians all live here they're all you know uh, Hawaii you know Hawaii residents it's a resident yeah. professional company so the arts feeds the community and it has to be fed by the community and I I feel that that's so important and people laugh at arts boards you know mm -hmm. oh you're on the board I, mean, I suppose you 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 have give parties and raise money well. People give parties, but it's <laughs> it's to raise money, and I mean, you have to. And the wonderful thing that National Endowment did years ago, 30, 30, 1976, was it, 166, um, was to unleash a, not a flood, but a great deal of money into the economy of the nation by setting aside uh, money for the arts. Oh. So many, so many things helped. You know, were, were helped. Get, getting started, and Hawaii again was on the cusp. Under Alfred Price, uh, the first director of the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, one percent of the of the money spent in construction for construction of any public building was mm -hmm. set aside to pay for the arts. Yeah, and still is. And still is. And it, it was the it was the model it was the model uh, law for every other state that does that, and. Um, then of course, those I mean, people in the performing arts said, "Well, you know, why don't we get some of that money?" And I, I've, I found myself at odds with some of many of my colleagues because this money was meant was concrete money, and it was what it was paying for was concrete artwork, visual art, right? That was going to go uh, either to on on the building or in in you know just movable art because our movable art, you know, we we built a, then built had made sure that art museum was built under his, uh, when he was governor, when yeah. there was so little money available. And he was, he pushed, he said, we've got to have this. We had all this art. It's a wonderful treasure uh, for our state. You know, it's a treasure, you know, when you talk about, because we both write a lot of grant proposals. Uh, yes. And we can say, this is how much money we put into the community. Mm -hmm. And if you're a youth theater, you can say, there is quantifiable evidence of um, kids who are involved in theater have better test scores. They just well, they're more yeah. likely to go to college. And, and blah, that's blah, blah. really all the arts, the, uh, uh, and and the theater, yeah. especially theater and music, because they're different types, kinds of their brains are are, uh, are turned yeah, on. Yeah. But we don't have that quantifiable evidence when it comes to adults. We don't have I evidence know. of how important it is to have pleasing aesthetics in your life and, and it's music. And because it's not it's not something you can. You can measure on a, in a, maybe a computer when they start, you know, working in our brains. <laughs> but it's, it's, it, it helps make a community, you know, it makes, it strengthens a community. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think, would you want to live in a community that had, had no, had no, had no radio, had no television, had no plays, had no music, had no dance groups. When you think about it, had no pictures, had no, had no, what do you think? Design. The designing Nothing. buildings. Well, that, like you know. it would be like living uh, in a 19, uh, 1870s western. You know the western town. You know, John Wayne would run in, and, you know, and, <laughs> and they'd shoot him up, and then uh, you know. But there wasn't anything there except these little places. And the yeah. women. Well, the women looked beautiful. Always looked beautiful. In the in the movies. In the I movies, don't I don't think, think they probably could, looked yeah, probably looked very real. But it's it's <laughs> it's a need for. We just have to have something beyond ourselves and. And it's um, and something that that helps our children develop. 
Because if, if we don't like the, I mean, if we, the child grows up with no art, I mean, my kids are not, my, one's a nurse, who's a, now a nurse teacher, and the other's a contractor, but he's a fine carpentry contractor, Sandy Fisher on Kauai. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does, fine, you know, he's a wonder, he's an artist. And um, I know when he went to St. Clement's uh, preschool, they said, oh, God, we love it when Sandy brings music, because Fridays were music day. Because Sandy would bring Mozart horn concertos. He loved <laughs> Mozart and Haydn horn concertos. Do you know them? Uh, no, oh, well, they're, I know they're, Haydn. And, I mean, I, well, I, mean, I but know it's them. They're horns, and they're just they're just horns, and they're just great. And Sandy would go with a little, you know, his little record under his arm. And I said, well, why is that so wonderful? Because well, the rest of the kids bring Tubby the tuba. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So they neither grew up to be an artist, but I'm. I think they, they went through um, uh, the summer programs at H2I, the Summer Junior Theater Workshop. Oh. And my daughter did a lot of, did some acting and a lot of costuming. She was a costumer for oh, a while. Oh, so they had, well, that, that was yeah. part of their development. It helps us it learn just, how to think how, and relate and yeah, problem How to get along solve. with people, and, and that's a big thing, and, and, and how to think differently. So if, if you come against a problem, like this morning when I ran out of, when I locked myself out of my car, how am I going to get... Well, I, and you got it done. I'm not sure I got it done because I was I was had some art training, but it, at least I thought of a way to do it. But I'm a, just a great advocate. You know, I can go on forever about that one. It's it's part of it's part of living, and it's something that we have to have. We have to have food. We have to have housing. We have to have all those things. And the arts that we are in, whatever they may be, are are part of that. And making the money for it is. You know, I say, well, I can't do anything creative, but actually, I make. I have felt that I've made it possible for other people to be creative because you yeah. can't be creative when you can't eat in creative ways. Yeah, I mean, HTY throws some great fundraisers. Well, HTY is famous for its <laughs> fundraising parties, <laughs> and um, you know, I didn't do this. Uh, well, but I was there when we started the parties. But now Chamber Music has these great fundraising dinners. Quiet, you know, dinners in nice homes oh. where you have, you know, um, supper, you know, nice supper and wine, and then a group plays, you know, in a small home outfit. It's like oh, Chamber nice. Music started. I didn't have anything to do with that, but um, I say, well, yeah, I'm there, so we have good parties. It's part, you know, it's, and it makes money. Of course, you have to make money. Yeah, we 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 all have to find our ways to support the arts, and yeah. I, I think um, you, you know, have food and waste. shelter. Yeah, you have that great summer fundraiser. Yeah, we have a good fundraiser too. Kala kind of Kala Kalabash. Kalabash. Um, uh, you know, food and shelter do need to come first, but the I, I really hope that someday someone, and maybe it's going to be me, maybe you'll work with me, we'll get one of those Wallace Foundation grants yeah. to, to quantify and qualify the positive effect of art within yeah. our lives. I'm not sure that that's, that, that's possible because art is such an ephemeral thing and I'm not sure that it's been you know art's been going to die for I mean, we've had art ever since somebody first pounded a you know pounded a, a you know a, a log to let people know that they were there so the next village knew oh. <laughs> you know they've been it's been forever so this isn't something that just came along when yeah. with you and me yeah. or, or our grandparents or something it's but part it's part of human nature uh, there's got to be a, a way to measure the brain waves then. That's what we need. We okay. need a neurology You can tell that she's the younger one. I'm <laughs> ready to go. Yeah, okay. Let's well, do well it. I'm glad that there are. I'm glad I'm not. not I'm glad there's. I'm the only one, you know, just about ready to fall off the cliff. Yeah. But I'm not ready to fall off. No, the you're not. We got to go. Yeah, well, it's, you, know, you said this would be. Awesome. I'm sorry I talked so much. It I does go fast. I brought you. It's a, it's, it's a talk show. So yeah, I know, but I didn't mean to talk this much. <laughs> All right, I gotta, sorry, I gotta say a few things, and we'll talk some more off the camera. Um, thank you very much for being here, for uh, uh, witnessing <laughs> this conversation with us. I appreciate it. I would like to thank our production manager, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear. I would like to thank our uh, stage manager, uh, Sachi Slomak. Thank you, Sachi. Uh, our communications director, Chrissy Gothigan, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. Please join us next week. Center Stage is here every Wednesday from 2 to 3. And you can also catch our shows on thinktechhawaii.com or um, they're archived on YouTube. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week.